everyone, welcome to the Talk of Fame podcast. I'm Kaima Tigni. And since the suck after strike ended a few weeks back, a lot of us podcasters and journalists have gotten back into kind of the group of interviewing actors and people in the entertainment industry again. But it's honestly been a hot minute since I have interviewed a filmmaker or an influencer. And I'm so happy to be able to film this with the lovely Bassia Mallet. She's an award-winning filmmaker and dis- who discovered her love of, fi- of film as an actress at three months old. Now, 16, she has quickly become a successful content creator with almost 5 million subscribers to her social media page. She's an author, painter, and multi-talented artistic person. It's seriously awesome to see how much our generation is doing so many things at, at like our ages. And it's so lovely to um have you on a podcast for today episode how are you I'm good I'm good thank you so much for having me I appreciate it absolutely so a couple of years back um you started a TikTok account with your grandfather that has Alzheimer's like how did TikTok you know help bring you know joy into your grandfather's life that was dealing with Alzheimer's well oh that's a great question A lot of times my grandfather would just sit, you know, and do really nothing. He would just watch TV or he would just, you know, walk to the store and just kind of let his days go by. It was kind of boring, you know. But when I started TikTok with him, it was like a combination of the silent generation and Gen Z. So it was like he was able to become cool and, you know, become a grandpa for everyone in the world. And he just became more active. And I saw a big change in his mental health, honestly, with starting TikTok. He was really happy. He would always ask to, like, make videos. So I really appreciated, you know, having that element of, you know, social media for while he was around. Yeah, like social media has really, you know, made a big, a big difference into like, some people's lives and connecting to get people together, especially since the pandemic, we weren't able to really see each other and our families. And was, I definitely checked out your social media when I took time with your grandfather. And it definitely made me so happy. I was like, oh my God, this, like these videos are so amazing. But like, like how did, you know, make a TikTok account really help with your grandfather's like mental health I know you mentioned this earlier but especially having Alzheimer's like you sometimes feel you know alone or you really feel upset or you remember things like how did you know make making a TikToks and stuff help like your grandfather like with his mental health and getting um remembering things every single day Honestly, I believe that it was the music. So anytime that we would play any like oldies that he liked, you know, we noticed that he would like dance to them or like, you know, get into the groove of things. So when we would film videos, we would play music for him because that would also be a really big part of, you know, getting him active. And I honestly just believe that the music and you know, the element of social media. That's why I love TikTok, really, because it's you're able to incorporate music within, like, the, the videos that you make. So I really feel like the music was a really big key aspect in, like, you know, him becoming, you know, popular because a lot of people saw his personality when music would come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, that's honestly, like, like that's kind of me, though. Whenever the music comes on, honestly, I just loving it. I, like, yeah. it really showed that music really made him so happy. Like, what was this, like, the type of music you would play? Because I'm honestly an oldies, like, person that loves, like, oldies type of music. So I'm kind of curious to say, like, what are you, you and your grandfather's music that you like to kind of jam out to or dance to? Definitely some Neil Diamond. You know, he Ooh. loves Sweet Caroline. Cher, um, Tina Turner, who else? Ah, there was one other one that he, oh, George Michael. He really liked one more, um, Try by George Michael. Um, you know, a lot of old, you know, oh, he also liked My Girl. He liked to listen to that with my grandma. You know, just a lot of oldies from, like, back in his time. I think it was really nostalgic for him to listen to songs like that. And then he was able to listen to new songs that I would play for him. Like during quarantine, a lot of Olivia Rodrigo, yeah. uh, Cardi B. He did a Cardi B and Offset video with my grandma. And actually Cardi B saw it. We did a Megan Thee Stallion video. So yeah, I just think that music is a really big part of, you know, 
why he loved TikTok so much. Mm, yeah, because like with TikTok, it really, you know, comes with a big audience. Like with having TikTok and everyone basically on it, it really comes with discovering a new audience. And it's crazy to see like Cardi B really discover his videos because it's like you don't like really see like celebrities like Cardi B to really discover your videos. But like once you said Neil Diamond, like did you ever see um the Broadway show A Beautiful Noise New Neil Diamond story? It's about Neil Diamond in uh New York City. Like have you ever seen No, that? I haven't. Like it, I I seen it a couple of months ago during the summer and it's honestly so good. I think you I think you all love it though because it's like with the, when you sit down I'm like oh my god she will love this like with Neil Diamond. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna check that out. Loves, like Neil Diamond and like those type of music so I think that's something like you would definitely love to see. Yeah, he was a huge fan of Neil Diamond. Like honestly, I if Neil Diamond were to come to our house and perform for him, he would just be so happy. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh, I already know. Like, I think that you'll probably be like, nothing's going to top this thing that oh, ever yeah. in my life and no time I formed in my house. Like, I think yeah. nothing can top that. But, like, what were, you know, like, his favorite, you know, videos to make? Like, what like, I know you guys did, like, cooking videos, dancing videos, and all these things. Like, what were, like, his favorite, you know, type of videos to really create? I would say cooking videos because... You know, he got to eat all, like, the treats that we made after that. Um, or the lifestyle videos, like, when we would go out and, like, go to the store. Or when he got to take a ride on a private jet, that was pretty fire. Ooh. I'm You so know, jealous. interacting with different people. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think that he liked all of them. But I would definitely have to say the cooking or the lifestyle videos. We also have a YouTube channel and he would make those videos like we would make slime or we would do like, you know, nighttime routines or vlogs. Like I think stuff like that was fun. Mm-hmm. It definitely is. Like I remember that ERA, like when everyone used to love vlogging, that they'll post like yeah. low quality or high quality videos growing up, even though now they're like, why that was as these videos are horrible. Like Yeah. But like you have created a production company called Worldwide POV Productions, where it's a video and film production company dedicated to telling thought provoking stories using POVs from across the world. Like how does Worldwide POV Productions, you know, help spotlight stories that are dedicated to POV. Well, I feel like, because the film I made with my grandfather on having dementia, I really wanted to tell that story his from his POV because I feel like a lot of people misunderstand people with dementia and with a lot of different things too. Like, that's why I have a few things coming in the future for different POVs of people. But I love POVs because I started making POVs on TikTok. That's where the whole thing originated from. 2000 POVs is my TikTok and I would make TikTok videos of, you know, POVs. And that was what really got me, you know, really popular at the time. So I'm like, why not make you know a short film from my grandfather's POV because that's what would help people understand you know his his sickness a little bit more so I feel like you know having wait what was the question again what was the question again sorry like 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 what how do you guys you know spotlight stories that are dedicated to POV Mm, okay I see no, I just pick a topic. Like, if it's a topic that I feel like people should gain an understanding on more, that's what I'll make a POV on. Ooh, that's so interesting. Like, well, for me, like, I'm the person that loves watching POVs because I love, like, learning from people's different point of views on a situation. Yeah. Whether it's, like, an influencer, an actor, a uh, professional, um, you know, so many things. Like, it's, I'm the type of person that loves to learn. So it's, like... You know, learning from people's POVs, like, I'm just like, this is for me. Like, this is like, I, I just love it. But, like, are there any guidelines or specifics that you use to, like, that you choose to, I, wait, I'm going to restart the question. Are there any guidelines or specifics that you take to choose a POV to spotlight? I think it has to really just do with if I feel like that person is misunderstood. You know, I want to help that person, you know, get their story out there. That's why, you know, there's there's some things to come. But 
yeah, I just feel like if you're misunderstood or you feel like you have like a really good story that you want to share with other people, then yeah. Ooh, that's so interesting. Like sharing each other's stories is seriously, you know, the best thing that could happen. Because I know with a lot of people, it's like sharing, not a lot of people have the opportunity to really share their stories. It's something that like there's not like too many platforms on there out there that really share stories uh, like during the platform. So it's so much needed. But um, like how did, you know, growing up as an actor really help you discover your love for filmmaking? I'm pretty sure being behind the, because I was also behind the scenes a lot, especially with my mom being an actress and, you know, filmmaker, producer, writer, all that. And a lot of my family is in the music, I mean, not music, sorry, um, filmmaking industry, also music too, but filmmaking. But I feel like being behind the scenes of that really helped me like to see that I really want to do this because it's really fun when you think about it, putting something together and you know, having all these people, because like filmmaking can never be done by yourself. Well, it can, but you know, it takes a group of people, it takes a village really to put something together. So the fact that there can be all these different people, whether it be craft services, makeup, um, PA, you know, all that, it's really cool to see all these people come together to put together one project and, you know, put it out into the world. So I think that just appreciating, you know, the love for filmmaking from a young age really helped me to see that it's really cool and that's something that I wanted to do Mm -hmm. yeah it's like really great to have you know like coming from a family that's in like filmmaking acting and everything it really you know really this really takes a village on how what you want to be when you're older I mean like I was having a conversation you know, a few days ago about, you know, I come from kind of like a family of journalists, you know, family, um, I have two family members that are in journalism for a little news station and not like with having family members, I grew up doing that. Like from my experience, it really, you know, takes you like myself to be a journalist to other people. So really with growing up with those people that do a specific industry, whether it's like food or acting or journalism or sports, it really, you know, really, you know, inspires you to pursue what they want to pursue. But um, the first um film that you created was The Questions I Asked Dementia. That is based off of the deep pain that you saw in her your, your grandpa's experience with dementia that started to get worse. Like, what were kind of like the emotions, you know, like what were the emotions that you felt when you were creating this film? Well, I was honestly, it was a really proud moment for me, especially seeing that I was able to, you know, help direct my grandfather into being like, you know, this actor, but he wasn't really an actor because it was so real for him. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I was really proud. It was emotional because I was seeing him, you know, live out his dream of, or I'm not going to say his dream, I'm not going to speak on his behalf, but, you know, be someone that people look up to that you know he's able to help tell a story and have this story live on for forever and I think it's really just special that I was able to capture those moments with him and you know make the film for people to watch yeah like I seen a little bit of the documentary and it's just really good I love it like I'm the type of person that loves documentary so remember when I saw you had a documentary I'm like oh my gosh I definitely have to check this out because I don't like it was especially with learning about your grandfather's life and sharing it with the world it really you know gives people a different you know perspective you know, on his journey and really just, you know, help people learn what it's like to be dealing with dementia. Because it really, when people have dementia, it might be mean two diff- different meanings to people. So especially with getting that meaning, it really, you know, can like change people's perspective on how they can approach people with dementia. Yeah, facts. But the last thing I have for you before we head off is, like, did your grandfather have the chance to see the film? Or if so, what was his reaction? Yes, he did, actually. And I think he likes seeing himself on the TV. Uh, I'm not too sure that he understand what he understood what the film was about. But I think he did like seeing himself on the TV screen and 
you know, as like an actor, because it was, it it was like, you know, it was a storytelling. So yes, he was an actor in it. There were no lines, but the emotions were definitely there. So I think he was happy. He did smile. Ooh, he did smile. So that definitely is a fact, though, if he liked it. Like, even like, if, if I was in a movie, if I see myself, I'll be like, damn, nothing can replace this. My life is Period, good. yeah. And um, your work is, you know, so inspiring. And like, uh, with what's like kind of like next for you? Like, what do you have kind of in store for the future? If people are wondering, like, what's up with you and your production company and everything? Well, I do have more films coming out soon. I have a documentary that should be done around at the end of this year and probably, you know, coming out at the beginning of next year, I would say. And I have more music coming out soon, hopefully see and you know just you know more content on tiktok with my makeup Ooh, makeup okay i see you and so i thank you so much for coming on it was so great meeting you like your videos with your grandfather and the videos you're making today are super helpful and it's seriously making me and so many other people a day so much better and it's super you know motivational and Thank you so much for joining and thank you for listening. Make sure to go check her out on social media and stay tuned for what she has next. And thank you so much for coming on. It was so great meeting you. Thank you so much for having me. It was great meeting you. Of course. Have a great rest of your day.